integrate integ- integrative control of muscle movement. And really, we're going to focus on one thing. How does the nervous system cause the muscles to move? So this is a basic idea of how this works. Okay, as you can tell, it's not simple. All right, and this shouldn't be a surprise. Just think about any movement, like anything that you want to do, just and don't even think about it in terms of a, an, an exercise context. Okay, just think about I want to pick something up. All right, just something as simple as I'm, I've got a spoon on my desk here. I pick it up. What has to go into me picking up a spoon? Obviously, when we do a complex movement that might be associated with exercise, running, um, making uh, a jump cut, playing basketball, uh, shooting a basketball, hitting a baseball, um, it gets just exponentially more difficult, more complicated. So we're going to try and simplify this. So really, there's four parts. You have to decide to move. Your brain has to figure out what needs to move. Then you have to actually do the movement. You have to move the appropriate muscles at the appropriate time with the appropriate force. But while this is going on, you also need to adjust. Okay. And there's a million reasons why you can do this, why you would want to adjust. Okay. Let's just take about, just think about this. We're not going to dive in and try and explain how this works, but just think about hitting a baseball. Okay. Or hitting anything that's thrown at you. Okay. Now I've been playing outside with my kids. And we've been playing baseball, right? I can throw it to, to Tate, Tate seven. He's doing very well at hitting, but trying to get him to pitch to me, that's another story. Like I'll show him where I want him to throw it so I can hit it. And half the time it's, you know, above my head, at my feet, that sort of thing. And I still try and hit it. And sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Okay. So while this is going on, I have to make adjustments. I'm expecting a ball that's, you know, three feet off the ground. 18 inches away from my body. I don't know. I'm making numbers up. And then I end up having to hit a ball that's two inches off the ground that's three feet away from my body. Okay. It's not easy. So to start off, we have to develop the idea. So we have to make the decision. This occurs in your prefrontal cortex. In this decision to move, what has to happen or what ultimately happens is you come up with this plan. And this plan is what muscles are going to be used, when are they going to be used, how much force are they going to be used, what muscles do I have to inhibit, Um, are there other supplementary things that I have to activate, that sort of thing, okay? When we do anything, yes, you know, if you go back to the, the all or none principle, motor units fire maximally, but we're not always firing all motor units. Rarely, if ever, is that actually happening. And so we need to know, well, what motor units? It's not even just specifically muscles, it's motor units which adds a layer of complexity. Once we've got this plan to move, we actually need to move. And so we're going to send all sorts of signals throughout the nervous system. Some are going to be excitatory. Some are going to be inhibitory. Okay, we're activating efferent alpha motor neurons. And these will, if they're activated, if we stimulate them, they're going to cause muscle contraction in a motor unit. If they're inhibited, nothing will happen. Okay. Now, as this is going on, the cerebellum gets involved. And it's taking what the the motor plan is and what's going on. And then it looks at, it takes into account proprioceptive feedback. And so mu- adjustments can be made. So for example, just think about if you're walking. As I'm walking across campus, maybe I'm just walking on the sidewalk. And then I decide to walk across the dirt or a street or the curb or, or whatever. Things change. My gait will change, okay, so that I can continue to walk in a smooth movement or in a smooth pattern. This is what the cerebellum does. There are also a couple of other things that you need to take into account or that we need to know about. So we have the pyramidal or corticospinal tract, and this basically connects the motor cortex um, with the brainstem. You've got your basal nuclei, which are get involved when we have a complex movement. And I would argue that just about everything that we do, especially with exercise, is a complex movement. It's not just a simple patellar tendon knee reflex where it's one muscle, okay? It's many muscles that are fine-tuned. If you just take a moment and think about your favorite athlete, okay, and what they do and however they do it, it's it's remarkable that they're able to get all these muscles firing at the exact right time with the exact right force to do whatever it is they do. Whether it's someone playing lacrosse, a figure skater, a water polo player, you know, whatever. Then you've got the spinal cord that is helping integrate the sensory information that's, that's coming in. Okay. So to summarize, you've got your visual centers because moving often, you know, we're, we're watching something. You have your motor cortex say, Hey, it's time to go. 
And then you coordinate everything with your basal nuclei and your cerebellum. Um, this information travels down to your, uh, your spinal cord through the pyramidal tracts. And ultimately, they're synapsing with motor neurons to either excite or inhibit them so that you can have the appropriate muscles fire at the appropriate time with the appropriate force.